On this week's Waypoint, Tokyo Game Show spills the beans on patch 2.1, everyone gets earrings, and no one is rolling a Rogadin. What's up guys and welcome to Waypoint, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV recap for September 27, 2013. I'm your host, Kat Andresco. This week's show might as well be called All About 2.1 because that's what all the information coming out of the Tokyo Game Show covers. This past weekend, Square Enix and Yoshi P himself held a four-day Titan challenge and even gave too many live letters addressing questions ranging from the population of Eorzea to the details surrounding the upcoming patch. While we covered this letter in full over at XIVNation.com, let me give you the highlights. Yoshi P started off with the Eorzea census, where he detailed level distribution, login numbers, and grand company breakdowns. We have all that covered on the site, but what I wanted to talk about was this chart showing what races everyone is playing. I think we all expected Nikote and here to dominate the landscape, but what's up with the Rogadin? Not getting much love at all. Also of interest is the average level of players as of the Tokyo Game Show. Take a look here. When counting all classes, the average level is only 19 with legacy players and 16 without them. But I hear you saying out there, well, Kat, if you include the crafting classes, they probably bring the average down. And yeah, you'd be right, but not by much. Check it out. If you only count battle classes, each average only goes up by one level. What does this teach us? It shows you need to roll a Rogadin right now and go level him to boost these stats. If you want to check out some other cool stats from the Orzia census, head on over to the website now. The Tokyo Game Show also seemed to be the place to be if you wanted some information about housing, raids, PvP, or hell, anything that's planned for patch 2.1 and beyond. Since most of you are probably eager to hear about housing, we'll start there. 2.1 is set to launch free company houses in small, medium, and large sizes. While personal houses will come later, free company houses currently have over 380 pieces that can be used to decorate the inside and outside of your estate. While you already are able to buy or loot housing items, plans are in the works to allow crafters to get in on the action and create even more items. For the more nurturing among you, housing even lets you grow plants and train chocobos. Although, those two features are likely to come after patch 2.1 actually launches. Still kind of meh about housing? I challenge you to take a look at this cactar lamp and this mog decoration and not get excited. Don't lie, you know you want one. The 2.1 details don't stop there though. As Yoshi P spilled a ton of information for those of you waiting for the new raids and PvP. On the raid front, the Crystal Tower will be added. This 24-person raid challenges a large group to work together, or sometimes separately, to work their way up the levels of the Crystal Tower. With familiar bosses, music, and gear along the way, look for this encounter to be moderately challenging and require hard mode Titan gear to enter. But what I think's really cool about this raid is that fans of Final Fantasy III will love the nostalgia factor. Raid's not your thing? Are you more punch your friend in the face type? Fear not, as the Wolves' Den is set to add the first PvP element to A Realm Reborn. This new addition will even be adding PvP-only skills to your hotbar, as you gain points to cash in on some seriously cool-looking PvP gear. Those looking for some random action can use the Duty Finder without fear of running up against a pre -main. Last week, I told you about the Titan Challenge that was being held at the Tokyo Game Show. Each time Titan lost, a random world would receive Cactar earrings. Well, it looks like Titan had a really bad few days, as the Primal got his ass handed to him at least 122 times. How do I know the number? Well, all 61 worlds won Cactar earrings. Since that happened in less than 48 hours, Yoshi P made the executive decision to start the contest again and also give away bomb earrings. What happened? You guessed it, all 61 worlds won those too. But let me just take a second to thank all of our friends that attended the Tokyo Game Show. My heart thanks you, but my inventory space kinda doesn't. Okay, so it appears I'm still getting questions about link shells, free companies, and grand companies. So I kinda wanna put these questions to bed. A few episodes back, I talked about grand companies and if the decisions you make can hurt you. 
We even added a video on this channel about changing brand companies if you need to. Those two videos should cover you for grand companies, but link shells and free companies do need a quick description to allow me to set it straight. Most Final Fantasy XI players already know the word link shell. In XI, a link shell served as your guild, and while you could belong to multiple link shells by having a link pearl for each, you could only equip and thus chat with one link shell at a time. In XIV, this has changed a bit. You can join up to eight link shells currently and chat in each and every one of them at once. That's because link shells aren't your guild in this game. Think of them as private chat channels that you can invite your friends to and you've got the idea. Free companies are actually more in line with what you think of as a guild and you can only belong to one free company at a time. Free companies not only give you and your crew a place to chat, but also provide benefits to the entire group depending on the level of the free company. Help your free company move up in the ranks and you find yourself getting things like experience boosts and a whole lot more. Don't forget, 2.1 is also set to introduce free company housing for you and your crew to enjoy. If you'd like to start a free company of your very own, you'll need to be at least level 25 and have three level 25 or higher friends to sign your charter. Head on over to your grand company's OIC officer, get your charter for friends to sign, and turn it in. But you'll also need 15,000 gil to get started. Next up, we've got your art to feature, but first, I want to thank Netflix for sponsoring this episode of Waypoint. For a free 30-day trial, just head on over to netflix.com slash GameBreakerTV. You can start watching Netflix today on your PC, Xbox, PS3, iPad, and more. There's no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. Sign up today by using netflix.com slash GameBreakerTV and start streaming thousands of movies and television shows right to your television or mobile device. If you guys want to check out the Netflix original Orange is the New Black, the whole first season is up there for you to watch. Okay, last up here on Waypoint, we again want to take some time to showcase your greatest work. Drawings, videos, or tattoos, if it's Final Fantasy XIV related, we want to see it. Throw it up on the XIV Nation forums in our art spots, and I'll find it. Coming from the XIVNation.com forums, a nice mashup of XIV and Chibi from Barnavir. As if the Mikote weren't already badass enough, now they get to add cute to their resume as they jump into yet another artistic design genre. I'm just waiting for someone to submit a Mikote music video now that 2.0 is launched. If you take up the challenge, be sure to post the link on the XIV Nation forums. That does it for this week's episode of Waypoint. Be sure to check back every week for updated Final Fantasy XIV news. I'm Kat Andresco, and you can follow me on Twitter at Kat Andresco. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next Waypoint. Game Breaker TV.